Hefner and Ellie's trek along the way to find the watering hole had been a long one. And it was quite tiring for an elephant of four years and two months old, even in a straight line. But after an hour or two of walking, Ellie, only nine months old, was beginning to struggle once again. Can't we stop for a rest, moaned Ellie. But they both knew that they had not only to get to the watering hole, but also find Mummy and Daddy Heflapund. I miss Mummy, said Ellie, and Daddy. Yes, replied Hefla, who by this time was starting to feel a little worried. It was then they heard a rustle of grass from somewhere behind a nearby rock. They were used to the monkeys that sometimes ran through the grass and jumped about from rock to rock. And they sometimes said hello to the parrots that sat in the trees. But now they noticed all other sounds from around them had stopped. Everything was silent apart from a faint rustle of grass from behind the rock. Looking around, they saw no monkeys, no parrots. In fact, there were no other animals or birds at all. They were all alone. It was then they heard a pat, 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 pat landing on top of the rock. No, wait, that's too many pads. Anyway. There on top of a rock, sitting quite calmly, was a fully grown male lion with a big fluffy mane around his neck. He said nothing at first, but just started to slowly lick his paws to clean them. And Heffler and Ellie could see a glint of big teeth as he licked. Heffler and Ellie had been warned about lions, about how not to trust them and to stay as far away from them as possible. They had seen lions the day before while walking and Mummy and Daddy were not happy to see them at all. The trouble with lions Daddy Heflapunt had told them, is they are trouble. You see, if you remember, I told you earlier in the story, a baby elephant would make a nice meal for a hungry lion. After a few moments, the lion stopped cleaning himself and looked up towards the two baby elephants and grinned. It wasn't a nice grin and the two elephants felt a little nervous at seeing such a big lion sat sitting on top of a large rock, grinning at them for no reason. So what brings you to a place like this all by yourself? He asked in a deep, husky voice. Heffler was the first to answer, being the oldest. Anyway, he realised his sister was now crouching underneath him and pressing up against his legs for protection. We're not supposed to talk to lions, said Heffler. My daddy says you're trouble. Oh, I see, said the lion still green. Maybe he is right. What do you want anyway? asked Hefler nervously. Well, said the lion slowly, I haven't eaten for a while, for a few days actually, and your sister looks quite tasty. <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> a sort of strange laugh, and then looked in pain.
Heffler, although only four years and two months old, still knew a few things about life and was very intelligent for his age. He could see the lion wasn't looking very well. Do you have a sore throat, Mr. Lion, sir? he asked. What's that got to do with eating your sister, said the lion. Can I suggest you have a drink first? Heffler asked. Where am I going to find a drink around here? roared the lion. You elephants won't let us lions drink at the watering hole. The big ones chase us off if we try. We can help you get a drink, Mr. Lion, sir, said Heffler, if you don't eat us. The lion glared at Heffler. But you could see he was thinking. Well, I suppose that seems fair, he said, after a pause. approached the watering hole, they could see Mummy and Daddy Heflapun standing at the water's edge, but watching anxiously for the signs of their two little babies. As soon as they saw them, they came running. Where have you been? exclaimed Mummy Heflapun as she cuddled them both with her trunk. I'm sorry, replied Hefla, but you were so fast, we just couldn't keep up. I know, agreed Mummy Heflapunt. Your dad can be very fast when he gets thirsty. We came to look for you, but I think you went a different way, she added. Heffler paused for a second before he spoke because he had something very important to tell his mum and dad. Mum, he hesitated. But before he could say another word, the big lion that Heffler and Ellie had met on the way walked slowly into view. What are you doing here? trumpeted Daddy Hefflerpunt, looking very cross indeed. Uh, it, it's okay, Daddy, replied Heffler quickly. We made friends with Mr. Lion. Friends? snorted Daddy Hefflerpunt. You can't be friends with a lion. I told you lions are trouble. The lion smiled that toothy smile again and faced the elephants. Now, he said very calmly, don't be like that. Your son and I made a deal along the way. Heffler is very intelligent. Maybe more intelligent than you give him credit for. Huff, replied Daddy Hefflerpunt who didn't take kindly to being told that kind of thing. What deal was that? The lion sat down and told the whole story to Heffler and Ellie's parents about how brave they had been not to get scared about being by themselves on the long journey to find the watering hole and how they stood up to a big lion like himself and how clever Heffler had been to know the lion was thirsty and not feeling very well. Heffler had also shown the lion which grasses were the best to chew on, to cure a sore throat, and even given the lion a mango fruit, which was very tasty and helped you when you're thirsty. Now, concluded the lion, after telling the whole story, all you need to do is allow me and the other lions to drink at the watering hole just over there and we can all be friends. Mummy Hefflepunt looked at Daddy Hefflepunt in a questioning way to see what his answer would be. Well, snorted Daddy Hefflepunt, seeing as you have been so nice to Heffler and Ellie, 
I suppose you can come and drink. But I don't want any trouble, he added. You see, lions can be trouble if you're not nice to them. But if you're nice to them, they can be quite friendly. And now, if Hepler and Ellie see Mr. Lion on their journey to and from the watering hole, or just out playing, they wave their trunks and trumpet a cheery hello to him. You see, the trouble with lions is, well actually, there is no trouble with lions, if you're nice to them. To Bombay, a travelling circus came. They brought an intelligent elephant, and Nelly was her name. One dark night, she slipped her iron chain, and off she ran to Hindustan and was never seen again. Nelly the elephant packed her trunk and said goodbye to the circus. Off she went with the trumpety trunk, trump, trump, trump. Nelly the elephant packed her trunk and trundled off to the jungle. Off she went with a trumpety trunk, trump, trump, trump. Night by night, she danced to the circus band. When Nelly was leading the big parade, she looked so proud and grand. No more tricks for Nelly to perform. They taught her how to take a bow and she took the crowd by storm. Nelly the elephant packed her trunk and said goodbye to the circus. Off she went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. Nelly the elephant packed her trunk and trundled off to the jungle. Off she went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. The head of the herd was calling far, far away. They met one night in the silver light on the road to Mandalay. Nelly the elephant packed her trunk and said goodbye to the circus. Off she went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. Nelly the elephant packed her trunk and trundled off to the jungle. Off she went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. 
Nelly the elephant packed her trunk and said goodbye to the circus. Off she went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. Nelly the elephant packed her trunk and trumbled off to the jungle. Off she went with a trumpety trump, trump, trump.